Hello my dear students and welcome back to Victory Batch and I am your Diksha ma'am. So today we are going to start with the another important topic from the chapter structural organization in animals and that is your cockroach. So let's get started. So most of you think that cockroach is very boring, not interesting at all and not that important. No, it's important from need point of view because you know around one or two questions are generally asked from this particular organism that is cockroach. So why not to study it really very well? All right, so let's get started. So as we are going to talk about cockroach today, so first of all, what is its scientific name? So you all must have seen cockroach. Right, you all have seen. Is there anyone who has not seen a cockroach in their life? So if I talk about cockroach in the animal kingdom, where do you place it? In the animal kingdom, the uh, cockroach, obviously, as I've already told, it is placed in the phylum Arthropoda and class Insectra. So if I talk about the classification of it, it belongs to kingdom Animalia, phylum Arthropoda and class Insecta. So where do you find the cockroach? Where do you find it? In home, where do you find your cockroach? So, the most common thing or the favorite spot of cockroach is kitchen. Yes, so they are very much abundant in your kitchen. So, in the kitchen, there is a warm condition because we cook the food. Yes, and where are they present usually? They are present below the sink, right, where, uh, you know, we, we used to, uh, you know, wash our utensils or near the cylinder, LPG cylinders, right, because there are dark conditions, there are no light conditions, okay, and damp condition, because there is lot of water, so wherever they will find warm, damp and dark condition, that will be the best place for the cockroach to live in, and most importantly, organic food, and kitchen is the best place because it has a lot of food, right? So when you go to kitchen during day, you barely see cockroaches. But during night, when suddenly you feel hungry at the mid of the night or you feel thirsty, go to kitchen, you generally find a lot of cockroaches outside the kitchen. So why? Because they have a habit. They have a habit. They're nocturnal. What are nocturnal organisms? These are those organisms which are active during night. We are diurnal. When do you do when do we go to work? During the day, not during the night, right? So we are generally uh, made by nature in a way that we are diurnal. We are active more during day and we sleep during the night, right? So these organisms, they are opposite to us. They are active during night and they sleep during day, right? So they are active at night. So all those organisms which are active during night, they are considered as nocturnal. Then omnivorous what about omnivorous habit they can eat almost everything they can even eat your clothes yes you heard it right so they can eat almost everything vegetarian non-vegetarian everything so those organisms which can eat almost everything you call them as omnivorous so they can eat everything Then we have cursorial. What is cursorial habit? They run very fast. So whenever you go to kitchen, if they, they find out that someone is coming, they will just run very, very, very fast, right? So cursorial is a habit where organism, they run very fast. So this is a kind of adaptation. They have uh, uh, adapted uh, with time that they can run very fast. Okay, so these are the basics uh, of cockroach. Let's talk about its morphology. What is morphology and what is anatomy? Morphology is how you appear externally and anatomy is how you appear internally, right? So let's talk about how the cockroach looks like externally. So first of all, the body is dorsoventrally flattened, elongated and bilaterally symmetrical. What is dorsoventrally flattened body? If I say this is an organism, this is the dorsal side of organism, this is the ventral side. If I press this organism like this, the body will become flat. Imagine this is a clay. If you press the clay hardly like this, the clay will become flat right just like mm, your mama uh, make chapati so in the starting it is a rounder but when she rolls it it becomes flattened this is how dorsoventrally flattened is okay just like leaf so the body is dorsoventrally flattened elongated that means it is long and bilaterally symmetrical what is bilateral symmetry if i have this organism imagine this is any organism okay all right so if i pass a plane like this 
and I try to cut the body into two equal half and I get two equal halves. So whenever I'm passing one plane and I can get two equal half, you call that symmetry as bilateral symmetry. Okay, so yes, they show bilateral symmetry just like us. Then the length is around 34 to 53 mm. They are long. How much long? 34 to 53 mm. And what's the color? You all know you must have seen the cockroach in your life. It is reddish brown in color. The body of cockroach is segmented because it is the arthropod. Arthropod have segmented body. That means they show metamerism. What is metamerism? Segmented body. Whenever any organism have segmented body, just like earthworm, earthworm also have the segmented body, right? So you call this uh, uh, segmentation also known as metamerism. Okay, so it, it, they can also use the word like the body of cockroach is metamerically segmented. So this is also right, metamerically segmented means it is truly segmented from inside as well as outside. You can find the body divided into certain segments. Okay, now. Wings extend beyond the tip of the abdominal male. If I say this is a cockroach, okay, imagine this is a cockroach. If it is a male, the wings will be longer and it will extend the abdomen. The wings will be longer and it will extend the abdomen. So this is one of a criteria to uh, distinguish whether the cockroach is male or female. You can see if they have longer, if they have longer wings, then it is a male. Then it is a male. Fine. All right. So moving further to some other points. I hope that's pretty clear to you. Body is dorsoventrally ventrally flattened, elongated, bilaterally symmetrical. Color is reddish brown. Length 34 to 53 mm. And they are segmented. And in males, the wings are quite longer than the females. Okay. All right. Moving further to how does they look like? So this is how they look like. So if I talk about the entire body of cockroach, the body is divided into three parts. How many parts? Three parts. Okay. The body. All right. The body. The body of cockroach is divided into three parts. Head, thorax and abdomen. So, do uh, you just speak with me? Okay, so if you are sitting at home, no worries, just speak. Whatever I am speaking, just speak with me. So, the body is divided into three parts. One is head, another is thorax and third is abdomen. Third is abdomen. Let's see where are these parts. So, this is how a cockroach looks like. Okay, so this portion, I am colouring every portion. Okay, so this portion is head. This portion is head. Alright, now let's talk about another one that's thorax. This portion is thorax and thorax is divided into three segments, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. Alright, so thorax is further divided into how many segments? Three, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax and metathorax. Right? Then we have abdomen. As you can see, the, this is abdomen and how many segments are there in the abdomen? There are 10 segments. In thorax, we have 3 segments. In a total abdomen, we have how many segments? 10 segments. Now, on the head, you can see these long structure. What are these? These are antennae. What are these? These are antennae. So, these are filiform type of antennae. What type of antennae? Filiform type of antennae. What are filiform? We'll be discussing when we'll be discussing head in detail. I'm just telling you the, you know, basics of the part. You should know the introduction. Just think it's like just an introduction. The detail we'll be doing in the separate manner like head then thorax then abdomen okay now as you can see here two pair of wings are present one is tegmina another is hind wing and also you can see legs how many three pairs of legs one two three one two and three because their wings are there so they are hidden beneath the wings okay and then you can see the tenth segment is quite bifurcated and near the tenth segment we have these structure known as anal cerci what are these structure anal cerci okay so you can see the diagram so that when we'll be discussing the detail of it you should have some idea that where are they and how they look like so let's start with the head first Let's start with the head first. But before head, let me tell you one thing about its exoskeleton. Like we have a skeleton which is endoskeleton because it is present inside our body. You know what is our skeleton? Uh, really, in the 
in the previous lecture i have told you what the skeleton is our skeleton is made up of bone and cartilage bone and cartilage and it's present inside the body but their exoskeleton their or their skeleton is present outside the body so you call it as exoskeleton any skeleton that is present inside the body is endoskeleton and any skeleton which is present outside the body is exoskeleton all right so let's get started with its exoskeleton first so exoskeleton is made up of chitin what it is made up of chitin so you call it as it is chitinous it is chitinous and chitin is made up of nac it is made up of a sugar made up of modified sugar modified sugar and what's the name of the sugar the name of the sugar is n acetyl glucosamine and acetyl glucosamine the same you study in the bacterial cell wall in botany you must have uh, if you have studied I, if i'm not wrong you must have studied the uh, bacterial cell wall so in the bacterial cell wall we also have nag and nam so out of that we the chitin have only nag sugar okay so how this uh, chitinous skeleton is made up of or it is how it is present so that chitinous skeleton is present in the form of plates yes you heard it right in the form of plates so there are certain plates of chitin small small plates one if you can see here this is one plate of chitin this is one plate of chitin and you call this chitinous plate as sclerites what you call them as sclerite so it is present in the form of chitinous plates chitinous plates and you call the chitinous plates as sclerites what do you call them as sclerites okay so these sclerites they are of three types based upon their location where are they present on that basis we have three types of sclerite one is terga or tergite terga or tergite second is sternum or sternite ite ones are plural and um or ah are, are singular and then we have pleura or pleurite pleura or pleurite okay so pleura or pleurite they are present laterally sterna or sternite they are present ventrally and they are present dorsally okay let me make things very simple for you so for example in the abdomen there are 10 segments and in the thorax there are how many segments there are uh, three segments for example this is one segment of cockroach we have 10 segment in the abdomen imagine this is one segment so this segment have what side first of all talk about its side this is the uh, what you say uh, it has um, dorsal surface imagine this is how it is okay this is the dorsal surface of the cockroach okay and this is the ventral surface of cockroach if cockroach is lying towards the ground ventral will be uh, uh, towards the ground okay now what happen is we have one plate which is made up of chitin like tergite it will be present on the dorsal surface of the segment like this okay so it will be covering like this whereas ventral one is sternite and it will be covering the cockroach like this so when you are looking at the cockroach what which segment are you looking at or which sclerite you are looking at you are looking at the dorsal one tergite because ventral one is present towards the ground if this is a ground imagine so here there is a segment present uh, uh, there is a, a sclerite present known as tergite and this one will be your tergite now on the lateral surface two uh, two sclerites will be present that will be your pleurite okay so imagine if this is a segment let me draw this as well for you imagine this is a segment uh, one segment of cockroach and you are looking at like this so might be this is the might be this is the tergite okay so below will be the sternite and on the sides here on the sides will be present the pleurite or just make it more simpler if this is one segment of cockroach this is the dorsal side this is the ventral side and this is the lateral side lateral means sides like in our body this is our lateral side okay so this is also lateral side so one sec one chitinous plate of sclerite which is tergite will be present like this sternite will be present like this and the pleurites will be present like this okay let me label the names this is tergite or terga this is sternum 
and these are pleura now you just can't uh, pu put these segments like this you need to paste them up otherwise they will move here and there so so that they should remain at the one place we have some membranes that keep them together so we have membrane known as arthroidal membrane which membrane arthroidal membrane that helps in attachment of these uh, of these sclerites together right so there is a membrane which is arthroidal membrane arthroidal or articular membrane it joins all the segment together it joins all the segments together or all these sorry sclerites together all right so it's like a glue it is holding all these uh, sclerites together and the name of the membrane is arthroidal it's quite flexible membrane because it is flexible this is why they are able to move as well so there can be a little movement around these plates right so this arthroidal uh, is arthroidal or articular membrane is a very flexible membrane it's a very flexible membrane i hope that's pretty clear to everyone about the exoskeleton of the cockroach an exoskeleton is chitinous and it is present in the form of plates in one segment we have one tergite one sternite and two pleurite similarly every segment will be having its own plate like this is segment one this is segment two they have their different plates right and uh, all the all these sclerites or these plates are held together by a flexible membrane known as arthroidal or articular membrane i hope that's pretty clear to everyone so let's move further and talk about head so as you can see this is a very cute face of the cockroach as you all can see so if you can also see the cockroach head is a little triangular in shape it is little triangular in shape right so the first point to note here that is the head is triangular in shape triangular in shape so during embryonic development of cockroach the first segments uh, the first six segments they fuse and they form head of the cockroach which is now the head of the adult so if i say in the embryonic stages in the entire cockroach didn't had head thorax and abdomen it just simply had a lot of segments the first six segment they fuse and they become head so if someone ask you head is formed by the fusion of how many segments what will you say you will say it is formed by the fusion of six segments how many segments six so it is formed by the fusion of six segments how many segments six segments right all right another thing to note here that is the head is present at right angle to the body how let's see i say head is present at right angle to the body to the body let's see how if i say this is the head if i say this is a head this is a small neck muscular neck is also present in cockroach and this is the thorax and abdomen and these are the legs okay see how cute it is <laughs> so you will see that the eyes are present here dorsolaterally like this antenna will be present like this and mouth parts will be hanging like this so in the head first of all what do we have in the head we have eye antennae and mouth parts okay and head as you can see is present at right angle to the entire body so if i make the angle like this which angle is formed here right angle which angle is formed here right angle so head is present at right angle to the body it is attached to the thorax because first thorax will come then abdomen will come here right so it is attached to the thorax by a small neck or a flexible muscular neck another thing in head we have mouth parts eyes and antennae and as you can see the mouth parts are hanging downwards the mouth parts are hanging downwards so that why that's why we say the head is at right angle and mouth parts are hanging downward and that hanging downward arrangement is known as hyponethus mouth parts what do you call it as hyponethus mouth parts hypo means below netha means jaw so their jaw is not actually present but they uh, their mouth parts resemble like a jaw so we say that their mouth parts are hanging downward this type of arrangement where mouth parts are hanging downward is known as hypogonethus so the head is present at right angle to the body with mouth parts 
hanging downwards and this type of arrangement is known as hypogonathus hypogonathus right another thing to note here is that neck is present so head is attached head is attached to the neck uh, to the thorax via neck via flexible and muscular neck but it's very little very small sometimes you just cannot identify it okay so neck is also present that's why if you have ever noticed the cockroach sometimes it's lying downward it, it used to remove the head like this like this right so because of this neck it can move its head so this neck helps in movement helps in movement in all the direction in all the direction all right now let's move to this uh, diagram all right so here you can see we have compound eye and we have ocellus what is ocellus these are simple eyes these are what these are simple eyes the eyes will uh, will be discussing in the sense organs in detail so here i am not talking much in detail about the eyes then we have antennae what are these structure these are antennae antennae are fully formed type and they are jointed what is jointed as you can see here there are different structures and they are joined to each other like this this is what joint condition is this is what joint condition is and they are very long and they are very long and uniform in the length and they, like you can see they they are so long sometimes it can uh, uh, it can cover half of the body so these type of antennae which are very long and jointed you call them as fully form antennae which antennae fully form so antennae here they are fully form because they are long and jointed they are long and jointed and antennae also have sensory receptors they also have sensory receptors the main function of these antennae is monitoring what is monitoring what is monitoring to see what's going on to see what's going on around okay so for example if i say uh, if you are standing here imagine if someone is standing here okay so which is the first part to touch uh, to the animal of the cockroach that will be antennae so that's the function of uh, the antennae that it will be there and they will monitor whether something is uh, ahead or not because they are not that uh, developed they don't have so much good vision so the main function of the antennae is monitoring because they have sensory receptors then we have these mouth parts and let's talk about them in detail okay so my dear friends i hope that's pretty clear to you so the first question that can be formed from this part is how many segment uh, gets fused to form head you will say six what's the shape triangular another point uh, at what angle it is present to the rest of the body at right angle how the mouth parts are present hypogonathus that means they're downward falling uh, do they have a neck yes they do have a neck and they are attached uh, the head is helping the head to attach to the thorax and also this neck is flexible muscular so it will allow the movement of head in all the directions antennae they are fully formed they are two in number and they are long and jointed and they have sensory receptor now you must be seeing here some small depression which is present over here can you see that this small depression this is antennal socket what is this antennal socket so the antennae are not just present superficially they are embedded in the head and they are embedded in this structure known as antennal socket for example if this is a socket and from here like this the antennae they are emerging out right so they are embedded in this socket known as antennal socket okay all right so let's move further and talk about the mouth parts mouth parts okay this is the most common question that is asked in the exam from the cockroach so please listen to your teacher very carefully okay otherwise you have to listen to your teacher carefully you know because we are talking something serious here <laughs> right okay so mouth parts uh, every insect or the organisms they have uh, different types of mouth parts depending upon what function they are performing and what they are eating for example let me give you an example the most primitive and simplest type of mouth parts are in the cockroach and that's chewing and biting they are very primitive that means they are very old not much uh, uh, they have not evolved so much they are the primitive one and these are chewing and biting type of so they are present in all those insect they uh, who have to eat food and by chewing and biting right 
Second thing, for example, if I talk about mosquito, like Anopheles, female. The female Anopheles or the mosquitoes, if you see around, they bite us and they drink our blood. So their mouth parts with evolution from chewing and biting, they get specialized and they form a needle-like structure and this is how they are drinking your blood. Okay, so they have the most primitive type of mouth parts and every insect according to the food they eat, they have different types of mouth parts. So they or the cockroaches, which type of mouth parts do, do they have? They have chewing and biting one. This is the most common question asked in the exam, which is the type of mouth parts, chewing and biting type of mouth part is present in the cockroach because they need to chew the food. Because they eat almost everything. If they're eating your leather, yes, they can even eat your leather. If they're eating the leather, they need to chew the food very well. Okay, so what are the various parts in these mouth parts? Let's see. Okay, first of all, they have labrum. They have labrum and labrum is the upper lip. Labrum is the upper lip. Okay, let me just write it here for you guys. So the first type is labrum. And then you can see here, labrum is the upper lip. Just like we have the upper lip, just compare it with our mouth parts. Then they have labium. You can see here, like we have lower lip, they have labium. Labium is the lower lip. Lower lip. Okay. Third one. Then they have these mandibles. Like we have teeth, they have mandibles. They have one pair of mandibles. So mandibles, one pair. Or two in number this was one this was one okay you can see here single single mingle <laughs> so mandibles they help in uh, tearing the food or you can see here they have grinding region and incising region if you can see the diagram the mandible have two region this region is the grinding region this region is the incising region so they have a function of chewing and biting the food to crush the food so the function of mandible is to crush the food they are like their they are like their teeth. Then we have our maxillae. How many maxillae are there? Again two. And maxillae are jointed. Can you see the maxillae? They are jointed. See here? They are jointed. Even your labium, they are also jointed. They are also jointed. So labium, they are also jointed. And here your maxillae, they are also jointed. So if you can see, what if I join two maxilla together? It will look like labium. Yes, definitely. So it is said that labium are the second pair of maxillae, but they later on develop to become the lower lip, right? So here you can see these small bristle-like structures that are emerging from the maxillae and even from the labium, like these small bristle-like structures. These are known as palps. What do you call them as palps? If they are the palps of maxilla, you will call them as maxillary palp. If you uh, if you'll call, if you're talking about labium, you will call it labium palps. And they have sensory receptors. They have sensory receptors. Sensory receptor for what? We'll be talking in the sensory receptors. Okay? All right. And now in the center, in the center part, yes, we have a tongue. And what's the name of it? The name of the tongue is the hypopharynx. So hypopharynx is a lobe-like, lobed structure. Can you see that? It's lobed. It's lobed. Okay, lobe is something which have a circular end, right? So hypopharynx is like tongue. This is also one and it is a lobed structure. What's the function of the maxillae? The maxillae, they are acting as a jaw and their function is to catch the food and give it to the mandibles because mandibles are performing a major function of chewing, right? So what they do, they will catch the food and present to mandibles and present the food to the mandibles okay so these are the mouth parts the first one we have is labium how many labium one it's the upper lip oh, sorry labrum <laughs> that's upper lip then we have labium that is the lower lip again one then we have mandibles two which helps in churning the food and then we have maxillae they are jointed they are two and they give food to the mandibles and then we have hypopharynx which is a tongue two structures which are jointed one is maxillae and another is labium fine so that's about the mouth parts and what type of a mouth parts they have chewing and biting do not forget this you can forget anything but you are not supposed to forget this point because from here the question is asked in the exam my dear students so do not forget this okay let's move further and talk about the thorax 
all right so thorax is divided into three segments as we have discussed already okay let me just make it like this so we have prothorax we have prothorax then we have mesothorax and then we have metathorax then we have metathorax okay now which is the largest out of all okay let me show you the diagram and then you will yourself tell me which is the largest one prothorax mesothorax metathorax which is the largest one prothorax now you must be thinking ma'am they have not labeled prothorax anyways they have labeled pronotum what is this pronotum the dorsal tergite of prothorax is very large because the prothorax is the largest segment right so that's why its sclerite or the dorsal tergite is known as pronotum the pronotum is not the name of the segment it's the name of the tergite present on it it's the name of tergite present on it okay so now you understand about the diagram no problem we will be dealing each and everything in more detail all right so prothorax is the largest one is the largest one and it has tergite and the name of the tergite is pronotum pronotum i hope that's pretty clear to everyone all right now moving towards what do they contain first of all talking about the jointed legs so their legs are also jointed so their legs are jointed so one pair of jointed leg is present in each segment or it emerges out from each segment so one pair of jointed legs comes out from prothorax one pair of jointed legs comes out from mesothorax and one pair from metathorax all right now what does thorax have in it it also contains wings but not in prothorax in prothorax no wings emerges out from the prothorax though in the diagram if you'll see so in the diagram you if you'll see it seems like it's coming out from the prothorax no 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 it's not coming out from the prothorax it's coming out from the mesothorax all right okay moving back to this so in cockroach so in cockroach there are two pair of wings one pair of wings it emerges out from mesothorax and another pair of wings it comes from metathorax all right so the wing that is coming from the mesothorax is known as mesothoracic wing mesothoracic wing or four wing also known as four wing or also known as tegmina or also known as elytra this is the name of the wing that emerges out from mesothorax the wing that comes out from the mesothorax is dark in color is opaque it's leathery and thick so this one is very heavy and thick and it generally act as a wing covers for the metathoracic for example if i say this is a mesothorax this is a uh, this is a mesothorax this is a metathorax so this is a mesothoracic wing and this one is a metathoracic wing so it is this is how it is covering it because it is emerging out from this segment and this is emerging out from the behind like this okay imagine this is a mesothorax this is a metathorax this one is coming out like this and this one like this so this is mesothorax it is acting as a wing cover for metathoracic wings it is dark it is opaque so when the cockroach is at rest the one which you see the dark one is a mesothoracic wing so it is a dark opaque leathery thick and it act as wing covers wing covers to hind wings which are hind wings the one which we'll be discussing here all right and this one does not help in flying does not help in flying so have you seen any cockroach flying if you disturb a cockroach so much so at that time or sometimes the cockroach also use the wings for flying okay then we have metathoracic wings so these are metathoracic wings or known as four wings so as comparison to the mesothoracic wings they are very thin they are transparent and membranous they are uh, you know they are very thin like membrane they are membranous and since they are very thin they they help in flying they helps in flying 
okay so that's about the thorax my dear students and so in thorax from every segment emerges out one pair of legs but from two segments emerges out one one pair of wings one is the mesothoracic wing and then we have metathoracic wing mesothoracic are known as four wing or tegmina or elytra and meta they are four wings right okay all right so legs how are they jointed or unjointed the legs are jointed legs are jointed how jointed legs look like like this so this is how their legs are okay anyways let's move further and talk about how do the legs it looks like you call upon the leg and here is a leg of cockroach so yes this is how it looks like it have various parts one is coxa coxa it's like your thigh like we have thigh then we have trochanter it's like our knee then we have uh, this femur sorry coxa it's like hip femur is like thigh femur is like thigh and the coxa is like uh, our hip and then we have tibia here which is the longest one and then we have tarsus tarsus are very small like this like this and jointed whereas tibia is the tallest one tibia is the tallest one if you can understand these uh, words or you can learn these it's fine but they are hardly asked in the exam to be very uh, honest right so this is how the wings are one uh, this is prothorax and this is another coming from mesothorax so this is a correct diagram so that's why i bring it on here because in the one which is in ncrt there you can hardly uh, see the demarcation so as you can see this wing it is coming from mesothorax and this one from the metathorax so this one is your mesothorax and this is the metathorax okay and this is your prothorax all right so that's about your thorax guys next we have is abdomen okay abdomen where are you all right so in abdomen how many total segments are there we have 10 segments in abdomen how many segment 10 segments now there is a twist bam twist we like twist we like twist in movie and we like twist in studies. We are very dramatic. <laughs> so I have told you that uh, uh, these uh, segments are covered by tergite, ster uh, sterna and pleurite, right? But there is a segment, there is a segment called 10th segment. 10th segment does not have sterna. It does not have sterna. So if I talk about 10 segments, for example, I have segment like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. First nine segment will be having all the proper segment, tergite, sternite, tergite, sternite, tergite, sternite. But the which is last one, it will only be having tergite, it will not be having sternite. The tenth segment do not have a sterna. So total how many sterna are there in the cockroach? Total how many sterna are there in the cockroach? Nine. And how many terga? Ten. So they have ten segment in which there are nine sterna or sternum or sternites. And there are 10 tergites. There are 10 tergites, right? For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, like this. Okay? So, all will be having their terga. These are terga. Okay? If I talk about downwardly present sterna, only up to this segment will be having sterna, which I just can't show you because that's the ventral side. Okay. All right. So if I talk about the abdomen, so in the female and the male, the abdomen have different structures. First of all, in the females, if I talk about the females, abdomen is broader. So that's also a kind of uh, sexual dimorphism. What is sexual dimorphism? That sexually, the sexually you can... Uh, classify them whether it's a male or a female by just looking at the morphology dimorphism morphology you're just looking at morphology and you can tell this is male this is female first character i've told you that male have longer wings second character i'm telling you the female have broader abdomen why do they have broader abdomen then the female abdomen is broader in the female in the female seven eight and nine segment they are forming genital or brood pouch. Genital or brood pouch. That means here it will be having its openings. Not ovaries I am talking about. Openings. It will be having its openings here. So, seventh segment is larger and broad shape. It is larger and okay, broad shape. How? Let us see. Uh, sorry, boat shape, not broad shape. I am just stuck on that broad. It's boat shape. 
you know sometimes it happen with the teachers okay so if it is a seven segment segment is little bigger larger and it is boat shape like this and eighth and ninth they're very small and hidden like this eighth and ninth very small and hidden like this so this is seven eight and nine and this entire structure is a genital pouch why it's a genital pouch because it contains three important structures let's see what does it contain so it contains three important structure one is the genital pore like in human we have vagina just like that they also have vagina so opening of vagina is a genital pore the detail of this will be taught in the female reproductive system so genital pore the genital pore is present in around seven to eight segment then spermathecal pores spermathecal pores they are also present in the brood pouch and the collateral gland and the collateral gland all these structures are present in the brood pouch of the female right what about the males what about the males let's talk about them also okay so as you can see in this structure this is a female reproductive structure okay this is the female reproductive structure so we'll be talking about that in detail when we'll be discussing reproductive systems so here you can see if this is 10 segment this is the 9 segment this is the 8 segment this is the seven segment okay because eighth and ninth they are not that visible so this one is the brood pouch technically this one is a brood pouch okay and this brood, pou brood pouch contains openings here two openings here and this gland which is a collateral gland this gland which is a collateral gland i think that's pretty clear to everyone now now what about the male in the male the ninth and the tenth segment in the males let's talk about males ninth and 10th segment forms the genital pouch from the genital pouch now if i talk about in terms of turga and sternite 9th and 10th segment we can also call it like that or we can also call it like 9th and 10th turga or turgite and 9th sternite contains male genital pouch or brood pouch male genital pouch or brood pouch now what does it contain like in the female the brood pouch contains genital pores spermathecal pores and collateral gland what does uh, these have these have dorsally placed anus dorsal anus ventral genital pore genital pore again is the opening of the male reproductive system and gonapophysis now what are gonapophysis they are external genitalia like in us the males have external genitalia that's penis in humans and in female the valva just like that here the uh, these have these small chitinous plate like structures known as gonapophysis also known as phalomeres they are also sometimes known as phalomeres what are they made up of they are made up of chitin they are chitinous plate like structure so these three components are present in the male's genital pouch which is formed by the 9th and 10th segment whereas in the female it is formed by the 7th, 8th and 9th segment. Alright, so let's read the NCRT of this because many of you might find difficulty in uh, these reading these words. Okay, so that's why I bring NCRT of all those topics. The abdomen in both male and female consists of 10 segments. That's true, all have 10 segments. In female, the seventh sterna is board shaped together with eighth and ninth sterna forms a brood or genital pouch. Just like in males have 10, I have told you, you can also say ninth and 10th segment, you can also say in the terms of tergite or sternite. So in the female, seventh sterna is board shaped larger and together with eighth and ninth it forms brood pouch or genital pouch whose anterior part contains female gonopore. For example, if I say if I say this is the entire brood pouch, okay, if I say this is the entire brood pouch, the above side is always known as anterior and below side is always known as posterior side. So here we have two pores, what we have two pores, okay, all right, okay, where are we, okay, the anterior part contains female gonopores, spermathecal pores and collateral glands. In males, genital pouch or chamber lies at the hind end of the abdomen bounded dorsally by 9th and 10th turga and ventrally by 9th sterna. It contains dorsal anus, ventral male genital pore and gonapophysis. Now another thing, this was about the genital pouch. What other things are present in the abdomen? Let's see. Now as you can see here, 
this is the ninth segment this is the tenth segment from the and let me just write it this is male and this is female okay now from the tenth segment of both male and female if this is the tenth segment from the tenth segment of both male and female emerges out these jointed structure known as anal cerci what are these anal cerci so these two jointed filamentous structure will emerge out from the tenth segment of both male and female like this okay so that's anal cerci so in the abdomen of both male and female are present anal cerci okay what about these first of all they are paired from which segment from 10th segment they emerges from 10th segment and yes they are jointed they are jointed and these anal cerci they have sensory receptors yes they have uh, these sensory receptors especially they detect vibrations because they are hanging downwards towards the floor uh, so whenever they're moving these are rubbing towards the floor so if someone is coming the vibrations will occur on the floor and they will detect it and they will detect it and if they got to know from right from your room that you are coming towards the kitchen they will just run away that's why sometimes you just go and they run away and you never find them right another thing in the males specifically in the males in the males we have these small thread like structures coming from the ninth segment and these are anal style what are these anal style males show more style male shows more style na so that's why males have anal style anal style from which segment from ninth segment they are hair like filamentous and only in males only in males uh, so just remember males have more style than the females or they show more style right so just remember from there all right so let's read the line from that male bears a pair of short thread like anal style which are absent in the females in both sexes the 10th segment bears a pair of jointed filamentous structure called anal cerci i hope that's pretty clear to everyone about the abdomen and nobody will forget it if you find any difficulty in knowing about these pores do not worry once we'll discuss the reproductive system everything will be crystal clear okay all right next we have is the question which of the following wings in the cockroach are transparent membranous and are used in flight very simple the one which is at the last segment which is metathoracic so they are also known as hind wing four wing tegmine and wing covers are used as another names for mesothoracic wings so hind wings they are for flying so answer is c next find the incorrect option head is formed by fusion of six segments this is absolutely correct in female the seventh sternum is boat shape and together with the eighth and ninth form a brood pouch or genital pouch absolutely correct the four wings are transparent membranous and are used in flight no 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 just right now we have done it these were hind wings so this is incorrect mouth parts are chewing and biting time this is also true so answer to this question will be c all right next next we are going to start with the anatomy so the first system that we are going to talk about in anatomy is the digestive system is the digestive system let's begin with the digestive system okay so like in every organism like in us as well the digestive system is divided into gut and the glands their system is also divided into gut and glands okay so what glandular structures they have the one gland they have is a salivary gland and another they have is hepatic ck hepatic ck we are just talking about names first and then we'll talk about the diagram so if i talk about the gut the gut is divided into three parts fore gut mid gut and hind gut and hind gut hind gut and fore gut they are lined by cuticle they are lined by cuticle cuticle is a thick skin type of structure it's a thick skin like structure so this is also lined by cuticle so what are these structures in the fore gut the fore gut starts from mouth and ends to the gizzard and ends to the gizzard so from mouth to gizzard is a fore gut so i'll be 
talking about the structure don't worry we just listening listen to the names first midgut's main function is absorption of food absorption of food and this is little thin and highly coiled structure it is highly coiled structure okay then we have hindgut and hindgut is divided into ilium colon rectum and anus and it is broader than the midgut it is broader than midgut so the mid uh, so the gut entire gut of cockroach is divided into three parts the mid foregut midgut and the hindgut out of this foregut and hindgut they lined by cuticle this is not lined by cuticle why because it has to undergo absorption if there is a thick lining on the gut it will not allow the food to pass through na that's why the midgut does not have the cuticle okay let's see the diagram then things will be more clearer so this is the diagram of the cockroach as you can see there is a mouth and from mouth immediately after mouth is present a structure small structure known as pharynx what it is pharynx so there comes the pharynx so this very small very little only one segment long structure is a pharynx then comes is the esophagus so this is the esophagus this is the esophagus so around the esophagus are present salivary gland and salivary glands have little structure attached to, to them they are like the storage structure which are salivary reservoirs which are salivary reservoir so their function is storage of saliva storage of saliva salivary reservoirs this stores the saliva whereas salivary gland it has enzymes salivary gland have enzymes for digestion have enzymes for digestion okay next then after esophagus is present the largest part of the craw uh, largest part of the foregut which is crop right so crop if i talk about crop crop is the largest part and the function of the crop is it stores food it stores food so it stores food for some time interval and then comes another structure that's gizzard what is that gizzard so gizzard has some other name as well and the name of gizzard is proventriculus proventriculus gizzard or proventriculus is like a mixer grinder it's like a mixer grinder so it will churn the food how it is going to churn the food because this has an outer layer of circular muscle and inside it has six chitinous teeth let me show you so if this is the gizzard so gizzard will be having circular muscle on the outer surface and towards the lumen it will be having six chitinous teeth like this six chitinous teeth right so this helps in churning the food it churns the food churns or grind the food outer it has circular muscle because more the muscle more the movement more the grinding and churning and towards inside inner portion it has six chitinous teeth six chitinous teeth right then it has highly coiled portion known as midgut so in the junction of midgut and foregut are present hepatic ck how many are there 6 to 8 how many are there 6 to 8 so these hepatic ck as we have already discussed in the glandular portion they secrete enzyme so let's talk about them then let's talk about hepatic ck you can see there from up to here is your foregut up to here is your foregut after that comes this coiled midgut so in the junction of foregut and midgut are present hepatic ck so all right hepatic ck so hepatic ck they are glandular they secrete enzyme they are blind sac what is a blind sac that have only one opening for example if these are hepatic ck they will be like this they will be like this and opening in the gut like this okay they are blind sac they secrete enzyme they are glandular and they are 6 to 8 in number they are 6 to 8 in number if they are secreting enzyme definitely they will help in the digestion of food so what enzymes are these digestive enzymes 
these are digestive enzyme fine okay next we have is a mid gut which definitely helps in absorption of food now comes the hind gut which is broader than mid gut so as you can see at the junction of the mid gut and hind gut are present these structures which are malpighian tubule malpighian tubule has nothing to do with the digestion they are around 100 to 150 in number and they help in excretion so we'll be discussing in the excretion only then comes ileum colon and rectum so these structure that is of the hind gut their function is to uh, absorb the water and salts right so they absorb water and salt and now the feces are formed which will comes out from the anus to the outside so that's the entire structure of the elementary canal also known as the gut of the cockroach so sometimes they do not use the word gut what they use they use the word elementary canal elementary canal so that's about the gut of your uh, cockroach let's uh, uh, talk about the ncrt of it let's read it the elementary canal present in the body cavity is divided into three regions: foregut midgut and hindgut okay the mouth opens into a short tubular pharynx leading to a narrow tubular passage called esophagus so mouth open into pharynx pharynx into esophagus this in turn opens into a sac like structure called crop used for storing the food. So, first question that can be formed here function of crop storing the food. The crop is followed by gizzard or proventriculus. The another name of gizzard you should be knowing is proventriculus. It has outer layer of thick muscles and the inner cuticle forming six highly chitinous plate called teeth. So, they also can tell you cuticular teeth. They can also tell you cuticle having chitinous teeth. So, it's fine, right? So, inner lining is cuticle which have the six chitinous teeth that we have already drawn here. Like this. Okay. So, these are the teeth. Okay, so cuticle is the lining. Okay. All right, so where are you? Okay. Gizzard helps in grinding the food particles, grinding and churning, one the same thing. The entire foregut is lined by cuticle. The ring of six to eight blind tube, tubules called hepatic or gastric CK is present at the junction of foregut and midgut. So, very important line. First of all, they are present in a ring manner. If it is the gut, they will be present like this in a ring manner okay so the entire this line is very important because from here a lot of questions can be formed the entire foregut is lined by cuticle first question where, uh, where does the cuticle is present second six to eight blind tubules they are blind in sac like i have told you they are known as what they're known as hepatic ck they are sometimes also known as gastric ck is present where are they present the another question from location between foregut and midgut which secrete digestive juice at the end of midgut and hindgut is present another ring of 100 to 150 yellow colored thin filamentous malpighian tubule they help in removal of excretory product from hemolymph we'll be discussing in excretion the hindgut is broader than the midgut and is differentiated to ileum, colon and rectum. It's divided into three parts. The rectum opens outside through anus. Fine. So that's about the digestive system. Let's talk about the another anatomy and that is the excretory system. So let's get started with the excretory system. So now what are the cells or the organs that are helping in excretion? So let's talk about them first. So the first one that we have are the malpighian tubule that we have just seen in the ex, uh, in the digestive system. One are the malpighian tubules. Second are the fat cells. Third we have is the pericardial cells. Pericardial cells also known as nephrocytes. They are also known as nephrocytes. And the third we have is the uricose gland uricose gland so all these structures or glands or cells they are excreting one thing and that's uric acid so we say that the cockroaches they are uricotelic uricotelic are the organism which have their excretory uh, product that is uric acid fine so all these somehow they are picking up the nitrogenous waste and converting it into uric acid and throwing it out on, uh, into the body right or from the body so malpighian tubule they are 100 to 150 in number how many are these 100 to 150 where are they exactly present they are present they are present between mid gut and hind gut they are present between mid gut and hind gut they are also they are also blind sac like 
that means they will also be having one opening and they are yellow in color they are yellow in color so let's just see one of the malpighian tubule so if you'll see the malpighian tubule it will appear like this and it will be lined by glandular ciliated cell because of the cells are glandular they can secrete something the cells are glandular they can secrete something so what are these cells they are glandular and ciliated so now what uh, what are the thing that we need to be secreting here let's see so imagine this is the malpighian tubule one malpighian tubule and it is present between midgut and hindgut this is the okay let me just label it here this is the hindgut okay and this is the midgut so imagine this malpighian tubule is dipped in the uh, or it is present in the hemocele hemocele or uh, hemocele is that open space in the cockroach right uh, cockroach do not have the well developed blood vessels they have the open cavities and that is hemocele and that cavities are filled with the fluid known as hemolymph so just like we have blood they have hemolymph right so imagine here is present the hemolymph okay this is uh, the hemolymph here hemolymph is a body fluid of the cockroach and in this hemolymph is present nitrogenous waste so these cell what they do is these cells will pick up imagine these same cells are also present here they will pick up the nitrogenous waste here from here and they will convert it into uric acid they are basing uh, basically doing nothing but they are precipitating it after precipitation what they will do they will just send this out from the body through the anus so through the anus this uric acid will be taken out so imagine this is the anus okay so it is coming out from the anus there is no separate excretory system but here there are malpighian tubule which are uh, joined with the gut they will pick up the nitrogenous waste from the hemolymph that's the body fluid convert them into uric acid precipitate them and then send it out through the body through uh, send it out uh, from the body through the anus right then fat cell pericardial cell they are also performing the same function these cells they can also produce uric acid and throw in the hemolymph and from hemolymph it can go out through the malpighian tubule through the anus so these also they basically excrete uric acid excrete uric acid okay uricose glands they are present in male it also excrete uric acid so these are the various um, what you say the organ cells uh, and the body parts that are performing the function of excretion on the cockroach let's read the ncrt excretion is performed by malpighian tubule each tubule is lined by glandular and ciliated cell they absorb nitrogenous waste and convert into uric acid which is excreted out through the hindgut therefore this insect is uricotelic why because it excrete uric acid in addition the fat body nephrocytes and uricose glands also help in excretion okay that's about the excretory system let's talk about the another system which is a blood vascular system okay so let's start with that so blood vascular system is also known as the circulatory system so if i uh, talk about uh, the cockroach the blood vascular system is open type what is open type of circulatory system the blood vessels are not developed the blood vessels are not developed they are not developed right so where does blood move so in us we have a well developed developed blood uh, vascular system we have a lot of developed blood vessels so the blood is moving in the blood vessels right so if my blood has to go to any tissue it will go via capillaries okay but here the capillary network is not at all developed so what happen in these kind of organism the blood is present in open cavity or spaces or sinuses you call it as hemocele so the body fluid or the blood is known as hemolymph and hemolymph is present hemolymph is present in open cavity or spaces that is known as hemocele hemocele if i talk about the hemolymph what, do, what does hemolymph have let's see hemolymph or its blood it contains plasma and cells and these cells they are like wbc's they are like wbc in the plasma is 
present a sugar and that is trehalose trehalose sugar is present but very most important thing the hemolymph it is colorless that means it does not have any color it is transparent it is little transparent and it moves or you can say it is from transparent to little white in color sometimes and this colorless fluid white is colorless the reason is because here there is no respiratory pigment like in us we have hemoglobin and hemoglobin gives us the color so here there is no hemo, uh, hemoglobin so that's why it is colorless okay so here respiratory pigment is absent respiratory pigment absent so does it have any heart let's see does cockroach have heart okay so let's see so yes if this is a cockroach this is how it has heart and heart is present on the dorsal surface and just in the central so we say that the heart is present the heart yes it has heart is present in mid dorsal line okay how many chambers are these let's see let's count them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 there are total actually 13 chambers okay so one is missing here so this is what i wanted to tell you so if in exam the question appears not uh, do not count it because one is less here so it is 13 chamber 13 chambered heart and they are surrounded by muscles what muscles allery muscles surrounded by allery muscles okay now what happened here is that if you see the heart very clearly the first chamber have a long tube like structure and you call it as anterior aorta and it open to the head region to the head sinuses so first chamber first chamber has anterior aorta where does it open? Here is head, na? Here is head and head also have open spaces known as sinuses or cavities. And anterior aorta supplies blood to the head. So, first chamber has anterior aorta that supplies blood to head sinuses. Sinuses are open spaces. Okay? Now, if you see every chamber have openings and you call it as ostia and they are guarded by valves so if you see here there are ostia present on both the sides here also and here also okay so they have openings and what are the name of the openings ostia they are guarded by valves why they are guarded by valves let me tell you so what happened is the blood from the hemoseal enters through the ostia like this okay so it enters to the heart from all the surfaces from ostia like this so blood is moving from here to here once it is filled once all the chambers are filled the blood or the heart will pump and it will pump the blood from posterior to anterior direction okay once the blood is filled in all the chambers through these ostias the the valves will close now when the heart is going to pump the blood it will pump the blood in a specific direction so valve has a function that wherever they are present that means we want to pump blood in the specific direction and we prevent or we do not want the backflow of the blood because we always try that the blood should move from posterior to anterior direction and this chamber do not have ostia on its uh, posterior end otherwise everyone has uh, ostia on both the ends but this one does not have ostia on the last end because we want to close it because we want the blood should move from posterior to anterior direction so here uh, listen to me very carefully blood is pumped from posterior to anterior direction to anterior direction Okay, I hope that's pretty clear to you guys. Let's read the NCRT. Blood vascular system of cockroach is open type. So, this is the most, most, most common question asked. Blood vessels are poorly developed and open into space known as hemocele. Visceral organs located in the hemocele are bathed in the blood. For example, if I'm saying this is the cockroach body, this is the empty space known as 
hemocele and it has a fluid known as hemolymph just like that i've told in the malpighian tubule so every organ is basically we can uh, compare it like all the organs are bathing in this fluid they are dipped in this fluid this is what this line is saying all right the hemolymph is composed of colorless plasma and hemocytes the cells or the uh, cells of the hemocele they are also known as hemocytes heart of cockroach consists of elongated muscular tube lying along mid dorsal line of thorax and abdomen it is differentiated into funnel shaped chambers with ostia on either side so as i've told you here we will be having ostia on both the sides if you if you have uh, listened to me properly i said ostia will be present on either side except the last chamber why because we want the flow to move in that direction okay and what are the cells uh, of hemo uh, of the this blood known as they are also known as hemocytes so do not get confused okay all right next all right it is differentiated into funnel shaped chambers with ostia on either side blood from sinuses enter heart through ostia so how does blood enter they are entering through ostia and is pumped anteriorly to the sinuses again so anteriorly means they are saying the same posterior to anterior direction so that's about the blood vascular system my dear students let's talk about the respiration now as uh, the uh, blood vascular system is not completely developed so respiratory system uh, has to change why because uh, the hemolymph it does not have a respiratory pigment imagine if you do not have a hemoglobin who will be transporting oxygen for you imagine what what we usually usually say we say that this is alveoli and their exchange of gases takes place the blood vessel take the oxygen and in blood vessel we have hemoglobin which carries the oxygen and give it to tissues this is what we do what if there is no this intermediate present now alveoli has to extend itself and go to the tissues this is what happened in the cockroach because in cockroach because in cockroach the respiratory pigment is absent so the respiratory system has developed accordingly okay so here respiratory pigment is absent so the respiratory system has developed accordingly and it is divided into how many parts three parts we have spiracles the spiracles are openings we have trachea the trachea and tracheoles let's talk about them first spiracles so spiracles are nothing but little openings how many openings they are 10 pairs why they are in pairs because they are present laterally on the bodies on, on the pleura have you seen the pleura pleurite they are present on the lateral side of the cockroach so these also these small pores or openings they are also present on the lateral sides okay so 10 pairs out of this two pairs are in the thorax and other eight pairs they are in the abdomen they are in the abdomen let's talk about the entire structure uh, in the detail for that we'll draw a diagram let's get started so pick up your colorful pens my dear students and start drawing diagram with ma'am and that's a green screen but we don't want it okay all right so as i've said there will be openings known as spiracles so these are the openings small openings known as spiracles from where the uh, your uh, uh, oxygen or uh, uh, air it enters okay these openings they are guarded by muscular bands they are guarded by muscular bands okay now in now they will enter into a chamber known as atrium and these atrium also have valves they also have valves okay and they are also lined by filtering agent so that we, you will filter the air no dust particles should be there so these are your spiracles my dear students spiracles are openings and spiracles they are guarded by these muscle bands muscular bands and what's the role of these bands they will control the opening whether to wide it or whether to narrow it then we also have valves in them and the filtering agent and the filtering agent now these openings they are present on the lateral side and now they will open into trachea trachea are little broader tubular structures like our trachea like our trachea is surrounded by cartilaginous rings they are also surrounded by cuticular rings that's why they are known as trachea because if you'll see them they exactly look like our human trachea and they are lined by these cuticular thickenings okay and outside them is present a lot of multinucleated cells and you call this condition as syncytium 
you call it as syncytium okay so what is this these are cuticular thickenings the function of cuticular thickenings is that it will prevent the collapse of these because air is entering and moving out it will prevent its collapse okay and this is a syncytial condition or syncytium and that means multinucleated all right now this trachea will open into very thin tracheoles very thin tracheoles and these tracheoles they are present in a in a cell which is a tracheolar cell so these are nothing but tubes of cuticles and they are present in a cell which is a tracheolar cell tracheolar cell okay like around this was a multinucleated condition around this is a single cell right and what are you call what you call them as they are tracheoles the tracheoles they are thinner than the trache trachea and they do not have cuticular rings we want to make it thin or nature wanted to get, make it thin the reason is because these are the one that will lead to the exchange of gases how so for example they are present around your body tissues these are your body tissues okay these are your body tissues now what happen is your air will enter from spiracles move to the trachea and then into tracheoles from tracheol oxygen will enter into your tissues okay let me choose some other color of pen so from here the oxygen will enter like this into the tissues okay now as the cells as the body tissues they are also respiring and they will produce co2 by respiration whenever there is a breakdown of glucose it leads to the formation of co2 you all know that after respiration and uh, uh, this breakdown of uh, this uh, glucose occurs in the presence of oxygen that's why we need the oxygen okay so here because oxygen is going so we need to pick up the co2 so co2 has a thing most of the co2 gets released out of the body th from diffusion through the sclerites or the chitinous exoskeleton right and only few amount of co2 moves out through this manner or through this same process okay so it will give the oxygen and it will pick the co2 it will pick up the co2 but majority of co2 enters out from the body through the cuticle or through the chitinous exoskeleton okay so co2 can also diffuse out through cuticle or skin or chitinous exoskeleton now you must be thinking if co2 can move out simply like diffusion why not oxygen because oxygen is impermeable oxygen just cannot move like that oxygen has to enter through spiracles then trachea then tracheoles this is how the respiratory system of your cockroach it works fine okay let's read the ncrt of it the respiratory system consists of a network of trachea yes the that open through 10 pairs of small holes or pores called spiracles okay so what are these small pores spiracles present on the lateral side of the body thin branching tubes tracheal tubes subdivided into tracheoles so trachea divides into tracheoles carry oxygen from air to all the body parts the opening of spiracles is regulated by sphincters so these muscular bands what are they known as sphincters so these sphincters are what these are muscular bands okay exchange of gases takes place uh, at the tracheoles via diffusion so as i've told you the oxygen will be picked up and uh, uh, will be co2 will be picked up and co oxygen will go to the tissues the entire process is simply going through diffusion it is going through diffusion right and these muscular bands they are also known as sphincters what do you call them as sphincters all right so this was all about the respiratory system now what type of a question can be asked from here first of all how many spiracles are there are spiracles guarded by muscle bands known as sphincters yes or no yes another question uh, can be asked uh, just simple question what the respiratory system is made up of 
or uh, what organs helps in respiration so they can give you example like uh, malpigeon tubule gastric uh, ck or hepatic ck gizzard or trachea and tracheole you will simply say trachea and tracheole so these kind of questions are asked from this topic so they will not ask you so much complicated questions all right so that's about the respiratory system my dear students let's talk about the nervous system okay so if i talk about the nervous system of the cockroach what does they have in the nervous system first of all they have a large ganglion and a little smaller ganglion and both these ganglion they are connected by they are connected by ventrally placed longitudinal connectives connectives are nothing just nerves that are connecting ganglions okay so what are these these are connectives longitudinally placed right and these are ganglion so here is present esophagus imagine if there is present esophagus the one which is present the ganglion the one which is present above the esophagus is supra esophageal ganglion is supra esophageal ganglion okay and the ganglion which is present below esophagus is sub esophageal ganglion as i've told you there is one ganglion which is larger that is the one which is above okay so this one it is acting as a brain for cockroach okay so it act as brain so from these ganglion arises nerves yes you heard it right so from these ganglions arises nerves like this okay so the supraesophageal ganglion gives nerves to eyes which eyes compound eyes so nerves from supraesophageal ganglion goes to compound eyes antennae and mouth parts whereas the nerves from subesophageal ganglion goes to mouth parts to mouth parts okay so all these nerves are going to three regions compound eyes antennae and mouth parts and this one this one only in the mouth parts okay now they are attached to but since it is the arthropod and arthropods are non chordate and non chordate have a feature that they have double they have double ventral they have double ventral solid nerve coat and in this case it's ganglionated it is ganglionated double means two so two solid that means inside there will be no empty space ventral it is ventrally present and uh, what what i say ganglionated ganglionated that means it has ganglion so how many ganglions nine 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 eight and nine ganglion okay so this is the nerve cord so what are the features of the nerve cord of cockroach nerve cord is double that means they are two what is the location ventral and it is solid and yes it has ganglion it is ganglionated so compare it with your spinal cord so in uh, uh, in the cord it's we have uh, the opposite of it we have one nerve cord nerve cord is basically present in us also in the embryonic stages later then it gets converted into spinal cord we have one dorsally present hollow okay so here these are what these are ganglion so first three ganglion they are present in the thorax and other they are present in the abdomen okay how many ganglions nine ganglion these are ganglion now as you can see if i say here esophagus is present so that means most of uh, the nervous system is present in the belly region you understand that imagine if this is a cockroach this is the head of the cockroach this is the neck of a cockroach cockroach <laughs> this is thorax abdomen head neck okay and esophagus is present just around here like some some point here so that means one uh, ganglion will be here other ganglion will be here and nerve cord will be present here so in the head region you do not have much of the nervous system so nervous system is present around here only okay so let me just make it for you guys imagine this is the supraesophageal ganglion this is the subesophageal ganglion and the all right and this is a nerve cord because it is present ventrally this is ventral position this is dorsal position okay and in the dorsal position we have muscular chambers heart like this okay and this is the aorta all right 
So that means majority of nervous system is present in this thorax and abdomen called as belly portion. What if I cut the head of the cockroach? If I cut the head of the cockroach, the cockroach can survive for around a week. Why? Because our entire body system is run by your nervous system. And the nervous system majority of it is present in the thorax and abdomen. So the thorax and abdomen can live for around one week even if you cut the head of the cockroach. So there is a line in NCRT, even if we cut the head of cockroach, it can survive for a week. Why? Because major nervous system is in belly region, is in belly region. Belly region is formed by thorax and abdomen. Okay, so see, it can live for one week even after you chop his uh, head. Okay, anyways, let's move to sense organ, my dear students. So, what are the various sensory receptors a cockroach have? Let's talk about that. So, let's talk about the sense organs. So, yes, they do have sense organs, they have sensory receptors. Let's see what are these. So, first of all, they have is the eyes. They have two types of eyes. One are the simple eyes, the simple eyes, and another are the pair of compound eyes. All right, and then they also have sensory receptors on their antennae and they also have sensory receptors on their maxillary and labial palps as we have discussed also and labial palps and definitely we have talked about it already, the anal sulci. All right, let's talk about the antennae, palps, and the anal cerci first because we have discussed a lot of things about them. So, anal cerci have the sensory receptors to detect vibration. Labial palps, because they're present in the mouth parts, right? So, they are having gustato receptors. What are gustato receptors? These are the type of sensory receptors for taste. So, wherever in biology the word gustato comes, straight away started thinking of taste. Then we have the antennae. The antennae have three types of receptors. One are the olfactory receptors, that means for smell. The another are the thermal receptors that are for temperature. Olfactory receptors. I am not writing receptor for in front of everything, so you, I think you will understand that. Temperature. And the last which are tactile. Tactile is for touch. So, even if something get touched by antenna, they will get to know and the cockroach will run away from you, okay. Then we have simple eyes, also known as oscilli, one pair. The exact function does it perform, nobody knows, but it is meant that, it is meant that maybe these oscilli or uh, singular oscillus, they just detect whether there is a light or not. So, they detect the presence of light. Detect the presence of light or just light. What about the compound eyes? These are so special. They are also one pair. They are present dorsally. They are dorsal in location. They are black in color. They are black in color. And they, why they are known as compound eyes? Compound, me, a compound means having something which is more in number. So one compound eye is basically made up of hexagonal unit. They are around 2000 hexagonal unit known as omatidia. Omatidia is plural and omatidium is singular, right? So these are made up of, made up of hexagonal 2000 units known as omatidia. All right, let's see how does these eyes work. So let me show you the structure of one omatidia. So this is one omatidia. This is one, two, okay, let me change the color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are different. And this is the sectional view. You don't have to go in the much detail of the structure, but I, I'm just showing you so that you get an idea how does it work, okay? So here what happened is every omatidia receive its own light as you can see here. 
every omatidia will receive its own light and every omatidia will form its own single image and then the image formed by each omatidia will be collected and it will form one single image and this type of a vision where you are forming image by the combination of number of images formed by each omatidia you call it as mosaic vision what you call it as mosaic vision we say that we say that the vision in the cockroach is mosaic vision why because it is formed by the combination of number of images number of images right so each omatidia is uh, getting its own light and forming its own image okay let me show you how the image it looks like or how the cockroach sees actually so this is how the cockroach see the thing okay so each omatidia is producing its image and we are collecting the image this is by one omatidia second third fourth fifth sixth so each omatidia this is one omatidia image one image okay let me just not mark this so just take the one this one this is the image produced by one omatidia image produced by one omatidia or one omatidia so this type of a vision is known as mosaic vision so this is how the cockroach sees okay now this mosaic vision is a vision which have more sensitivity what is the character of this vision it will have more sensitivity but less resolution what is resolution like we say pixels the clarity of the image will be less but the eye can easily detect whether something is moving or not that is sensitivity so it is more developed to see the moving objects rather than forming the image of the object the cockroach is not interested in you they doesn't want to see how beautiful you are right so they are just interested whether rather you're moving or not or something movable object is there if the utensil is just lying just right there so it is not moving so it has to see if it is moving might be it's living and they have to get away from it okay so the this type of a vision is with more sensitivity but less resolution but this uh, cockroach is active during night so their vision is uh, is more adapted for night so that type of a vision is nocturnal vision so which is adapted for night adapted for night okay so the image or the vision which is adapted more for the night than the day that means it can see more better in the night than the day because they are nocturnal organism so this type of a vision is known as nocturnal vision why it's mosaic because number of images is forming one single image so that's about the compound eyes of your favorite organism that's cockroach so let's talk about the reproductive system so this organism is unisexual what is unisexual unisexual or dioecious that means there will be one male and another will be female so male and female are separate so you will find one male cockroach another female cockroach right they are unisexual another thing to note down here is that you can easily distinguish which one is male and which one is female and that is known as sexual dimorphism sexual dimorphism present what is sexual dimorphism that we can identify male and female how let's talk about it so if i'm talking about the male they have longer wings and antennae they have longer wings and antennae if i talk about the females they have broader abdomen they have broader abdomen one more thing that uh, we have done in the abdomen that males have anal styles so just by looking at all these things i can easily distinguish whether that's a male or that's a female okay so let's talk about the male reproductive system first okay so we are talking about the male reproductive system so i'll be drawing a diagram so you will not draw along with me you will first understand the concept okay so as it is a male it will be having a pair of testes it will be having a pair of testes so these are testes so testes how many are there one pair wow wow 
how many are there one pair <laughs> so testes are one pair and they are present dorsolaterally and these are present around four to six segments abdominal segment so it is present in the four to six abdominal segment and now they are producing as it produces sperms as you all know sperm has to be transported so for that there are ducts present so what is the name of the duct they are vas deferens so there is like two vas deferens or a pair of vas deferens so these are vas deferens vas deferens they are duct what's their function first of all they are one pair and their function is transport of sperm transport of sperm now these uh, uh, these uh, vas deferens they will open into a duct known as ejaculatory duct and this duct have a white color gland on it known as seminal vesicles seminal vesicles seminal vesicle is white in color and it stores and nourishes sperm it stores and nourishes sperm and it open into a duct known as ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct open to the outside via ventral male gonopore ventrally placed male gonopore so gonopore is the opening of the genital system okay now above the seminal vesicles are present this flower shaped gland this is the mushroom gland what is this this is the mushroom gland okay which gland is this mushroom gland mushroom gland has these structures in them let me show you this diagram okay where it is okay so as you can see this flower shape is a mushroom gland and mushroom gland is made up of two types of tubules one are the small tubule one are the long so in the diagram mushroom gland is not labeled but i am labeling it for you mushroom gland is made up of these two types of tubules so this flower shape is your mushroom gland okay all right moving back to the diagram we made all right so mushroom gland is present between 6 to 8 segment which segment 6 to 8 or sometimes it is they also say that 6 to 7 segment okay so in ncert it is mentioned around 6 to 7 segment abdominal segment that's pretty clear now behind this is present another gland which is a phallic gland which gland okay which color should i use okay this one phallic gland and phallic gland open to the outside through phallic duct which duct phallic duct okay so this gland is phallic gland phallic gland and this duct is a phallic duct i hope the diagram is pretty clear to everyone okay now let's see this mushroom gland because it's a gland it's a kind of accessory gland and phallic gland or duct what does they do let's talk about them so for that let's open this diagram imagine the testes are producing sperm and sperm from vas deferens is uh, from vas deferens it it goes to seminal vesicle now what does seminal vesicle will do seminal vesicle will give a seminal fluid it will give a seminal fluid okay so this is seminal fluid seminal fluid is given by seminal vesicles and here present are sperms so these are sperms these are what sperms the so seminal vesicle will glue the sperm together it will glue the sperms together right because we want to make a case like structure known as spermatophore so spermatophores what are spermatophore first of all they are packets of sperm and the packet is formed by the combination or the secretions of the glands present in the male reproductive system so the first step is the seminal vesicle will store and nourish the sperm it will give it the seminal fluid and glue the all sperm together now as it is moving down towards the ej uh, ejaculatory duct the mushroom gland will give it secretion now there will be a covering which is given by the mushroom gland so this is the coating by mushroom gland so mushroom gland will give this coating okay now now this will move more downwards now it will enter into the ejaculatory duct from seminal vesicle it is moving down towards the ejaculatory duct but in between them is present mushroom gland so mushroom gland will give the first coating then who will give the coating ejaculatory duct now there comes the another coating this is a coating by coating by okay 
दिस इज अ कोटिंग बाय इजैक्यूलेटरी डाक्ट कोटिंग बाय इजैक्यूलेटरी डाक्ट नाउ दिस पैकेट कम्स आउट दिस पैकेट कम्स आउट राइट शेयर who will now give the secretion phallic duct and the last coating by the phallic gland will come through the phallic duct this is a coating by phallic gland okay and this packet of sperm this packet of sperm is known as spermatophore spermatophore it's a packet of sperm so this packet of sperm is sent into the female's body via copulation or sexual intercourse so yes they show internal fertilization so any organism that is showing internal fertilization what is internal fertilization the fertilization or meeting of gametes that takes place inside the body of organism not the outside inside the body of organism like in us we have internal fertilization it takes place in fallopian tube right now spermatophore or the packets of sperm all right what's wrong packets of sperm they are deposited in female via copulation all right now who helps in copulation there are certain structures that you can see a lot of these structures are present these are fallomeres or gonapophyses or external genitalia we have talked in the abdominal part in the genital genital pouch or the brood pouch so there we have discussed the genital pouch is formed by 9th and the 10th segment which contains this gonopore this is what this is male gonopore this is male gonopore okay and external genitalia is present and dorsally placed uh, anus is also there so here these there are three types of fallomeres or gonapophyses present one is your left fallomere another is your right fallomere and then we have ventral fallomere so as you can see the gonopore is opening on this one which is the ventral fallomere so where does the gonopore opens gonopore opens on the ventral fallomere how many fallomeres or gonapophyses are there there are nothing but the plates of chitin they if you can see the left fallomere there is present a titillator these spine like structure and pseudo penis pseudo penis and titillator they are helping in opening of females vagina so that the sperms or the packets of sperm can enter right so these uh, gonapophyses they are helping in the process of they are helping in the process of copulation all right so what do they have they have gonapophyses or fallomeres what are they they are external genitalia and they are chitinous chitinous and what does they help in help in copulation copulation is sexual intercourse or coitus so they are of three kinds left right and ventral and on ventral gonopores open open on it all right so that's about the male reproductive system my dear students let's move further so the uh, the question that is asked from here is where does the testes present or uh, what are the accessory glands what's accessory gland mushroom gland phallic gland okay so what's the function of seminal vesicle they're white in color they store and they nourishes the sperm okay and they glue all the sperms together they glue as i have i have already told you glue all the sperms together so that's about your male reproductive system let's talk about female now female yes okay so this is how the female reproductive system it looks like so like in male we have testes and female we have ovary okay so ovary is present in 2 to 6 segment abdominal segment and inside the ovary you can see here ovarioles can you see these lines what are these these are ovarioles how many ovarioles are there you can see these tubes these are ovarioles you can count these are four but other fours are also present on the another side so total eight ovarioles are present eight in number they are present in a tube like fashion inside them is present ova so they contain they contain ova or egg now 
okay let me draw the diagram with my hand otherwise you will not be able to understand okay so first of all like in male we have testes in females we have one pair of ovaries okay these are ovaries ovary in segment 2 to 6 and inside them are present long tube like ovarian tubules like this and they contain sperms these are ovarians and i have told you what do they have they have ova now these uh, eggs they need to be transported like in male we had was difference they also have oviducts so they have oviducts this is oviduct this is oviduct both oviduct they join to form a common oviduct known as vagina this is the oviduct this is the common oviduct common oviduct known as vagina and this is the female gonopore female gonopore the vagina is present on the seventh segment which segment seventh segment now above the vagina is present here a structure a paired structure known as spermatheke known as spermatheke so these are spermatheke now the spermatophore are the packets of sperm sperma theke are small structures in the female sperma theke which segment you will find them in the sixth segment and they are like one pair and here male deposit male deposit the spermatophore so during copulation the male has to give these packets to the female but where does it keep it will keep in the sperma theke so spermatophores are deposited here they are deposited here all right okay now down here is present genital pouch or genital chamber genital pouch or genital chamber okay so this is the genital pouch and inside them is present genital chamber and here you will find the gonapophyses like in males these are gonapophyses these are gonapophyses okay let me show you this diagram here as you can see this is a genital chamber the place inside them and the down space is vestibulum or we can say this entire pouch is divided into two places the upper place is known as genital chamber the downward place is known as vestibulum okay so if i'm drawing this here you can see this upper chamber you'll call it as genital chamber and downward chamber is vestibulum and both they collectively known as genital pouch or for example if you have a pouch this pouch is genital pouch the upper surface is genital chamber the lower surface is vestibulum clear okay so now what happened here is there are also present certain glands some certain glands here these are collateral glands what are these glands collateral glands okay i didn't want to draw it here otherwise the diagram will be messy so you can see these glands also somewhere here these glands one pair of gland collateral glands so since i have drawn it so what's the first let's draw it uh, let's label it so collateral glands what are these collateral glands now what's their function let's talk about them collateral gland one pair now what happened is the ovary is producing ova the male has deposited spermatophores uh, spermatophores here now what will happen now the sperm will sperm will move down in the genital chamber from there ova will come ova will also come here and both they will meet and hence we say the fertilization takes place in genital chamber that is inside the body so we say that fertilization is internal so fertilization is internal where does it takes place it takes place in the genital chamber from here the ova is coming out through the vagina through female gonopore and sperms which are deposited in the sperma theke they will come out from the packets and they will also fall down here so both are falling down simultaneously in the genital chamber where the fertilization will takes place fine so if someone asks you where does the fertilization takes place the fertilization is internal internal fertilization where in genital chamber in genital chamber next 
now when the fertilization has taken place now the eggs will get fertilized and you call them as fertilized eggs these fertilized eggs are again packed in packets so everything which is coming out or moving in it will be in the form of packets okay so here a packet of uh, these fertilized eggs will be formed which is around uh, you know which color it is around black brown in color and you call this structure as OTK. OTK. OTK is black brown in color. What does it contain? It contain fertilized egg. It have fertilized eggs. So what we are doing is the eggs which has been fertilized, you are going to pack it. Now the covering of the packet is formed by collateral glands. The covering is formed by collateral glands. So they contain fertilized eggs. They contain fertilized eggs in two rows. Total eggs, how many? 14 to 16. 14 to 16 eggs are present in two rows. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in two rows, fertilized eggs will be present and total 14 to 16. Now, the covering is secreted by collateral gland. Secreted by which gland? Collateral. What's the size? 3 to 8 mm. So generally they are 8 mm long. Let me just drink some water. They are round. 3 to 8 mm long. So once the uthika they comes out, they are glued together to some you know crevices or cracks that are in the wall. So there the female it will put the eggs and they will develop. Now how the development will take place? Let's see. So they are deposited in cracks. Now how many uh, these uthika are released in uh, one go? Nine to ten. Uthika are released. Okay, so how many does female release these packets? How many packets does a female release? 9 to 10. Okay, anyways, let's talk about their development. So, development of these small, small eggs is very slow, gradual. You call them as gradual metamorphosis. So, metamorphosis is a type of development or is the another name of development that we usually use in terms of insect. So, when we, whenever we are talking about insects, the development is known as metamorphosis. Why? Because there is a shedding of skin. Why? Because there is a shedding of skin. And you call it as molting. What do you call it as? Molting. This molting is very slow. This molting is very slow, so you call it as gradual metamorphosis, which have a name porometabolous development. So if I'm talking about that cockroach have porometabolous development, so that means the development or metamorphosis is very slow and the egg has to convert into larva and larva then it will become adult. But it has to go through a number of larval stages because it is growing very slow, it is undergoing gradual metamorphosis. So if it is going gradual metamorphosis, it will show number of moltings. Molting is shedding of skin, it will show, uh, it will shed uh, skins around 13 times so we say that 13 time molting take place 13 times the molting takes place okay let's see let me just show you if i say this is the egg egg gets converted into the larva which is nymph nymph is the larva and then it will become adult so this nymph has to shed its skin 13 times it has to undergo molting 13 times to become the adult. So how the nymph is different from adult? You must have seen little little babies of cockroach, little black brown in color. So these babies, if you see, they are smaller in size as you know. And how they are different? They do not have wings. They do not have wings. So wings are absent in the nymph. Whereas in adults, wings are present. Wings are present. Right? And also, sex organs are developed in the adult stages. Sex organs are also developed. Alright? Another thing, 
the starting lymphal stages they are very not much developed but the last lymphal stages the last lymphal stages which are going to become adult they do not have a wing but they started forming wing pads wing pads are small structure from where the wings emerges out so the last lymphal stages have okay last lymphal stages have wing pads have wing pads okay but the wings are completely absent so uh, how does cockroach uh, is uh, how the cockroach can be problematic to us you know that how uh, why are we studying it first of all the very first reason is because uh, it's really important from need point of view it's in the syllabus and it will give you scores <laughs> second thing because if you do not understand the anatomy and physiology and the morphology of any insect you will not be able to uh, you know uh, discover any uh, insecticide right so if i doesn't know how to kill an insect uh, if i don't know the physiology of it i will not be able to know the, how to kill it so the sprays that are coming uh, in the markets they must have uh, understood that physiology so that's why we study there and yes cockroach it comes into the kitchen or home it can be very it can poison your food so it can be very dangerous for us it can cause food poisoning and so right so take care if there are cockroaches just kill them if you have if your mother see any one of a cockroach you know how she behave kill the cockroach yay this and that why because she knows if the cockroach uh, is there it can infect a lot of your food and that can lead to food poisoning so this was the cockroach and this was the diksha ma'am so we are done with the chapter structural organization in animals and i hope you must have done it too and read it carefully read all the questions uh, solve the ncrt if you are 11th class student it's really must to make notes or even if you are 12th class student you have if you are studying from me for the first time it's better to make notes and revise it nicely so i'll meet in the next class with another chapter till then bye bye keep waiting take care